Good evening. This is Gary Moore, and this is Armed Forces Week, which, of course, includes the United States Army and the Marines and the Navy and the United States Air Force. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a secret is proud to present for the first time in history a drill team composed of men from four branches of our armed forces as one unit. How are you going to top that? Gee, good evening. Good evening and welcome to the very special Armed Forces edition of I've Got a Secret. As I said tonight, we have a very special salute to our armed forces, and here is our first guest. Now, he is a pigeon, and his name is G.I. Joe, and believe it or not, he is a military hero. During World War II, G.I. Joe made a heroic flight over enemy lines with a message that kept us from bombing our own troops. Now, the gamble of entrusting this message to Joe paid off, and he saved the lives of 1,000 men. For his heroism, he was decorated by the Lord Mayor of London, which, to my knowledge, is the first time a pigeon has ever been decorated by a person. <laughs> Can we have an escort for Joe, please? Now, I think it likely that Joe doesn't smoke, so we won't give him Winston's. We have a carton of fine bird seed here for Joe to take back home to his new home at the Detroit Zoo with our compliments. I'm Thank sure you. he'll like it. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. And so, with the show certainly well underway, let us meet our panel. As usual, in their usual running order, there is Bill Cullen and Jane Meadows. <laughs> and Henry Morgan <laughs> and Betsy Palmer. That is our panel. <laughs> panel, you're all set to play the game, I there gather. You go. I want to tell you, my friends, that tonight you are going to meet some amazing people, each of whom represents an important milestone in the history of our armed forces. Now, the panel being all set to play the game, our first guest tonight is a lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force. Will you come in, please? <laughs> Now, friends, before I ask the Colonel, and we'll call him Colonel X, before I ask Colonel X to whisper his secret to me, let's look at some film up here on our screen. Now, by the way, if the reason that this film is not exactly Hollywood quality is that it was shot from a gun sight on Lieutenant Colonel X's plane, which was traveling at 760 miles per hour, eight miles up in the air. 
Also, the plane is vibrating from six guns, each firing 1,200 shells a minute. And watch the plane. There it goes. He got it. Now, Colonel X, if you will whisper your secret to me at the same time, we'll show it to the folks at home. Colonel, Mr. X's secret concerns a title which he won, and you will have only one question each, which will be the rule throughout the evening. And Jane, will start with you. A title that he won. Would this be a title such as the first? Yes, that is your question. Now we go to Henry. The uh, first to um, knock down an enemy aircraft of some kind? No. Nope. And that is your question. We go to Betsy. The first to be catapulted from a plane in a parachute? Please, no. no. <laughs> the plane you saw going down was not the one in which he was a passenger. Well, I was hoping not. I mean, I didn't he was on, on the other end of that affair. Uh, so, Bill Cullen, I've got to go with you. And I feel like I'm going to let down my own field again. But, Colonel, I notice you're a command pilot. Was it possible that you were the first man? Is it really first? Is it first? The first, yes. First man to go over 19 miles high? That's about as far as I can go because some Those are our did. four questions, neither of which is correct. I will tell you this, Colonel X is Colonel James Jabara, who is the first jet ace in the world. As soon as I said James DeBarra, Bill looked like he'd cut yeah. his throat. <laughs> now, uh, what, what, uh, oh, sir, uh, how many planes do you have to your credit now, enemy craft? Well, I have nine and a half in World War II, Gary, and 15 Russian MiGs in Korea. And he was our first ace in Korea. Well, <laughs> would you tell us what your peacetime duties are for the Air Force now? Well, Gary, right now I'm uh, assigned to the Air Defense Command and uh, the 337th Fighter Squadron at Westover Air Force Base, Massachusetts, and... We're just getting the 104, the Starfire that set the world altitude record uh, last week, and it's also the, the fastest flying airplane in the world that we have right now. Jim, it's been great having you with us. We met seven years ago right after you'd come back from Korea. A million Thank thanks you, to you. Good night. <laughs> that is only the beginning. Our next guest is a commander in the United States Navy. Now, sir, will you tell us your name and where you are from? My name is Commander Frank Kane, and I'm presently from Norfolk. All Thank right. You. Now, panel, during World War II, Commander Kane and the other men in his outfit were actually classified as secret weapons. And I will give each of you one guess as to, uh, to Commander Kane's job during World War II. Remember, he was classified, he and his men, as a secret weapon. Does anybody want to take a guess? Frog right fast. What would you say, Henry? Frogman. Among the first of the frogmen. That's it. Sure. You got the answer. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't last long. <laughs> now, we have some film here that shows the work of underwater demolition teams, as they are called in the Navy. And, Commander, would you describe what we're about to see? I'd be glad to. While we're seeing it. <clears throat> All right, run it, fellas. Here you see the boys getting into the water from a larger boat into a rubber boat. And here they are under the water approaching a beach. Here you see them towing in packs of, of demolition to be attached to these various obstacles on the beach. And there they are going back into the water and to be picked up. Look how fast that boat's going as it picks them up, too, by the way. Shot of them being picked up. Picks them up on the fly. And there... That is the end of it. That was the mine. That was the objective. objective yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much, Commander. It's a great pleasure to have you with us tonight. Commander King. <laughs> Moving fast, but there's a lot of wonderful people to meet tonight. Now, may we have our next guest, please, a former private in the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> now, again, panel, we will call this gentleman Private X. Uh, uh, Corporal X, I beg your pardon, ex-Corporal X. And he is from Manchester, New Hampshire, and a picture of Corporal X and the heroic event in which he participated during World War II has been commemorated by a United States postage stamp. You will have each one chance to name it, and we'll, Betsy, your hand oh, went up first. Are you one of the gentlemen who pushed the flag up on Iwo Jima on the hill? 
Boy, you fellas are highly expendable tonight. Things are going fast. Yes, this oh, is... Oh, <laughs> Yes, Henry. Look, just one thing. That was so obvious when you said postage stamp that there's a marvelous statue of it in, in Washington, you know. Yeah. You're going to see it, as a matter of fact, in just a moment. Oh. Now, this is... <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> I'm glad you entered. No, you threw me by saying postage stamp. I was thinking this. Yeah, well, of course, it's the stamp and it's the monument, too. This is former Private René Gagnon, and he was one of the men who helped raise the flag on Mount Suribachi at Iwo Jima. So let's look at a film recreation of this famous scene. If this is from a commercial motion picture, these are not the actual shots because there were no motion picture cameramen around at the moment. It says, uncommon valor was a common virtue. And here is the magnificent bronze statue of which Henry spoke in Washington, D.C. And superimposed on it, we see the postage stamp. Now, Rene, would you mind doing me a favor and going up there and pointing out to our audience which of these busy gentlemen is you? Right there, Gary. Is you right there? <laughs> I am certainly in no position to give you advice, uh, uh, give you any advice, but I noticed in the picture you had your back to the camera. Don't ever do that in television. It doesn't work out. <laughs> Thank you, Rene, very much. <laughs>